you know, it seems like with all due respect to the Green Party as an organization, I think they do so much good work, especially on a local level. Um, it seems like they just aren't going to reach that 5% threshold anytime soon, let alone uh, win a presidential election. Um, do you think that has something to do with their uh, strategy? Or do you think that maybe embracing, you know, a bigger name, someone with a bigger platform, like, a, you know, a Jesse Ventura or something, do you think that would be in the best interest of the party just to maybe get to that 5% threshold or even win an election? It, it just seems like we're a little bit stuck in the mud. I, I, I think that's a, that's a, a legitimate question. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it really uh, poses the real question of what, what 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 is the what is the Green Party and what how does it see its future, and what is the strategy that it believes it, it needs to engage in in order to build a, a party that's is sustainable? Now you know we know of the shortcuts where you uh, find some so-called big name that will bring some attention uh, to the party, uh, but you know I was making the point that we have an experience a very recent one mm -hmm. in which we saw. A, a big name, um, uh, a Bernie Sanders, uh, who uh, was the 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 face of a of a of a movement of an insurgency within the Democratic Party and in the broader society, uh, and you had people who were supporting Bernie Sanders who wanted to see uh, a uh, a new kind of politics in the Democratic Party, who were prepared to to go all the way, if you will, uh, because they understood that. If Bernie, or they thought that if Bernie won the nomination, they had a good chance, in fact, to uh, to beat Trump. But what happened? Bernie Sanders uh, believes that uh, Trump represents some type of, of existential um, threat. Uh, and when the Democrat Party turned up the heat and uh, systematically began to undermine his candidacy, instead of a fight, a struggle, he basically surrendered. Yeah. Uh, and it really alienated uh, uh, members of his his his, uh, his movement. Uh, people were upset, mm -hmm. uh, demoralized, uh, and the consequence is that his movement is in complete disarray now. Yeah, uh, and was was it's, it's a serious question whether or not it's going to be able to continue. And that, to me, is is what happens when you have a top down process, as opposed to a a more systematic but slower mm -hmm. uh, process of building from the bottom up. Not, not having your, your politics and your movement dependent on any yeah. personality. So there's no, I'm gonna tell you Gavin, there's no, there's no uh, shortcuts in organizing yeah. effective oppositional politics. Yeah, the only reason I ask is, uh, I remember Jill Stein ran on the, the slogan, it was something along the lines of, um, you know, vote green like your life depends on it because in fact yeah. it does. And I was just thinking if, if the Green Party or another third party progressive party had the chance to get on the debate stage or get to win an election, I mean, I, I, th I feel like if it's true that our lives depend on it, I think that's a, you know, a necessary kind of step to take. And I'm just, I'm just torn uh, because I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. And I've talked to Howie Hawkins himself on the podcast about the same subject and I mm. and got a similar answer. And I, I just have to push back a little in the sense that I... I just don't see any a future of the Green Party, you know, winning without someone who can, you know, maybe make the case a little bit more, uh, you know, effectively to a broader population that's maybe not already on board with the, with the leftist cause. You know, someone that can maybe appeal to libertarians or more independent-minded folks that haven't quite yet made the jump to identifying as a, you know, a far leftist essentially. Uh, do you think that like how are we going to, uh, you know, build a a movement that is broad enough and big enough to actually win elections, do you think? I think that the strategy has to be to uh, concentrate on building, on building power on the local level, mm -hmm. uh, to continue to, to build uh, organizations uh, that if they're going to engage in the electoral process, uh, they are doing it in a different kind of way. They're doing it from an organized base. Yeah. That they're not engaged in the same kind of, of candidate centered uh, bourgeois politics that we see in the duopoly. Because what happens when you have a, 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 a candidate that shows up and says, I got great ideals, uh, you all support me, vote for me. Um, you voted that person in, you have no social base to really uh, demand accountability. True. Uh, they go into this, 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 this swamp. And basically, you know, you lose them. They stop playing the game and 
you know, you in a position, uh, in a defensive position, trying to get them yep. to adhere to what they said they were all about. But if you do it a different way, if you come into the electoral process in an organized way, mm -hmm. uh, as part of a, a broader strategy for building independent yep. political power, then your candidate is your candidate. It is that person representing your movement and there's built in accountability. Plus you don't perpetuate the illusion, uh, Gavin, that we're going to make a fundamental social change uh, through the electoral process. It's not going to happen. The electoral process is important. There's spaces that can be exploited, but the kind of, 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 of radical transformation that's absolutely necessary in the US is not going to come about just from voting. Mm -hmm. So we've got to understand what it is we up against and what we need to do. Uh, and that way we don't uh, confuse ourselves into thinking we can have, we can skip stages, that we can bring in some celebrity that's going to uh, get us to where we need to go. We have the ideas in the program. Yep. A, a, a example of that, Gavin, is this. What was the program that the, the progressive Democrats ran with after 2018? The Green New Deal. True. The Green New Deal stripped down, of course, and gutted. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a, it was a platform that we we ran on in 2016. Yeah. Correct. And look at the look how it resonated once it got some real uh, exposure. Mm -hmm. So you know you you are partially right. If we ever had a chance to get on the debate stage, we 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 it'd be a different kind of politics. Yeah. Look, when we, did, when we had, uh, when, when Democracy Now! organized the alternative debate, mm -hmm. uh, where they allowed for Jill and myself to debate our counterparts in, in real time, you know, uh, we had 29 million people yeah. who listened to those debates. You know, so we, we, have, we have the program, we have the people that can do it, but as long as, as the Democrats are able to of scare people into believing that uh, you know the world's going to end if you don't yeah. vote for the lesser of two evils, it's going to be very very difficult. Even with a more popular uh, person, now yeah. the person that could have busted up this whole thing was in fact Bernie Sanders. Right. If Sanders would have broke with the Democratic Party and ran as a third party candidate, it could have been the first time in U.S. history that there could have been a presidential candidate in that in that way. Uh, they could that they, they won yep. but he wasn't prepared to do to make history right right because he he certainly would have gotten to five percent you know in the in the 2016 election and and that would have guaranteed the greens uh better funding this time around right so that's how the movement would actually really get started someone getting to five percent right. and then you know now howie and angela would have more resources for their race